Morning, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Off to an early start today at 7.30 in the morning. Usually I don't grab the camera until later, but I wanted to show you. I'm losing the patients. Patients meaning uh, hospital patients. I'm losing them. Every morning the voltage is lower than the previous day, although I run the generator anytime I'm working in here and anytime I'm using power. 11.5, they're done, they're fried. So now I've got to decide whether I want to go back to the auto parts store and take these batteries back and have them test them and tell me they're good anyway, although they're not, or just give up. Um, I don't think there's any point in taking them back because I know they're going to run them on that whatever test they did, uh, which is obviously not a really, really good deal. So, um, yeah, I gotta get the, go the uh, forklift batteries hooked up. So, problem is with the holidays right now, there's no delivery. I'm right in the middle of the holidays and nobody's open. So, I'm gonna try to keep these golf cart baby batteries just... See what I can do, I just keep running that generator. Every time I'm, I'm gonna go fire it up in a minute here. Day and night. Good thing the little Harbor Freight generator is running well. The thing's running 10, 12 hours on a gallon of gas. It's good. Well, I was checking out the Moringa tree and reading this book last night. And I am extremely impressed. I had no idea such a plant existed. That's amazing considering that uh, after studying online a little bit about the Moringa tree it is one of the top prepper and survival plants known to man and it is being used in third world countries to alleviate hunger and starvation and provide nutrients and minerals this is one of the most vitamin mineral and nutrient packed plants on the face of the earth they say it has medicinal benefits like you wouldn't believe sorry I'm trying to do this one-handed so I don't think I can really get to it but just trust me there's the lists of medicinal benefits and nutritional values of this plant just go on and on and on here's here's a list of some of the important vitamins this is just this is anti-aging properties, anti-cancer, anti just about anti-everything. This is a, it's almost like a miracle plant. They call it the tree of life. And compare it to the tree of life in the Bible. Some people believe it might even be one of the trees in the Bible. I am extremely impressed. Now, um... I am very, very thankful for the seeds that I have received because I am going to grow this. In North America, in colder climates, you have, what you will have is a annual. In southern zones, you will have a perennial. And they say this tree grows 10 to 20 feet per season. So that is a super, super fast growing tree. And the more you cut it, the more it grows. And if you can keep its root from freezing in winter, you will have another plant the next season. It continues to grow, and it grows wilder and faster than a weed, but yet it's one of the healthiest plants on the earth. You can eat the leaves, I mean every, literally every part of the tree. I am extremely impressed with this, this um, what I've learned about the Moringa tree. Can't believe I've never heard of it, so... Thank you very much for sending this book and the seeds. I will be planting these in my garden in the spring. Actually, I will be starting them indoors and planting them. And every survivalist and prepper should look into the Moringa tree and get some seeds to put away. And from now on, it's going to be part of my survival pack. Well, it looks like it's sunny at the off-grid homestead for now. That can change in any minute, I've noticed in the last few days. Yesterday got really dark. It started out sunny in the morning and it got really dark and stayed dark all day. 
and I ran the Harbor Freight generator and the battery charge the entire day. Uh, I discovered the batteries were still low. I am starting to wonder if the inverter, the uh, big power inverter is putting too much of a drain overnight on the batteries. That's the only thing I changed that I can figure that could cause any, any extra drain. That inverter is the only thing I haven't isolated from the changes that I made the other day when I rewired the battery banks of the tiny house. So I'm really wondering now. I think I'm going to disconnect the inverter today, the, uh, the big green inverter, and go back to using a clamp-on cigarette lighter plug. Actually, I don't have to use a clamp. I, I can use the cigarette lighter plug. Nah, I'll clamp it directly to the batteries. Because I'm going to try, I'm going to disconnect this inverter and try using my little inverter again and see if that will reduce the draw and the drain on my batteries. Now I'm up to 12.5, well, 12.6, 12.8. That one shows 12.8 with a charge of 74 watts coming in from the sun. So the 74, 75 watts, it was 80 something a minute ago, 89. And it's gonna increase as the day progresses when the sun rises. So that should offset the little bit that my laptop is using right now. So I'm gonna shut this off and I'm gonna go shut off the generator and just rely on the sun for a while and see how it goes. Now the voltage is dropping 12.6 and of course that's to be expected because there's not as much charge but we'll see how it goes and then when it shut off that inverter and uh, hook up the little one see if that might be what was draining the battery so bad well today was all about the batteries I know some people might get tired of the batteries but I have to get them off the truck I have to get them charged. So the DC generator is charging a bank of six of them that I've tapped and uh, I've drilled and tapped and put screws in. That's a separate video, the process of how I set that up and everything. But just want to show you what I'm doing this day, general overview. So moving forward with the off-grid project this year and in the coming new year. I will probably have a lot more project oriented videos such as setting up forklift batteries to use for off-grid solar power, um, specific chicken videos, specific gardening videos, specific electronics and hobby videos, and experimentation videos. So we will proceed with a lot of topic specific videos and then I'll also have the general overview videos and whatever I happen to be working on at the day if it's just around the homestead area we'll continue on with that as I always have but we'll make it more interesting now by having these these specific topic videos because I have a lot of subscribers and a lot of them there's there's a mixture of interests and to keep everyone interested I gotta have a mixture of of topics so it's going to be an exciting new year. We're going to mix it up. By the way, the chickens are now using all three of the shelters I've given them. They are laying eggs all over the place. I have, it's like an Easter egg hunt every morning. I've got eggs in a little, in a new coop over here. I've got eggs in the chicken tractor. I've got eggs in the other new chicken coop over here. Some of the hens are sleeping in the new chicken coops. So they're, they're distributing themselves evenly now and breaking it up. I did add some more shelter. You probably can't see it because the sun glaring. But I reinforced the shelter under the chicken tractor on two sides to protect them better against the intense colds to come. Intense colds, huh? <laughs> intense cold weather to come. I have reinforced, I don't know if you can see that with the sun there. I take the glare off the sun. I put on two sides, the back side and the other side, I've propped up some materials to keep that more sheltered so that they got a, a safer, more protected area to get in out of the weather. And I'm probably gonna take one of these doors that are leaning up here and leaning up against the side, or the back side each. Actually, I've got one for that side and one for that one. I'm gonna put a, one of those doors from the old camper 
against the backside of each of these other chicken coops so they've got shelter behind them as well. And then the chickens will have nice windbreaks but still be outdoors out of the chicken coops during the day. So a lot going on here behind the scenes, a lot of action and activity, a lot of still cleaning up a lot at the homestead. A lot of action but it's, it's hard. Sometimes I wish I had a head camera uh, because there is a lot of work I'm doing where both hands are filled and it's too much trouble ser seriously to keep moving the camera and setting up to record, moving the camera and setting up record, moving and setting up, moving it. It's just too much. So sometimes I just keep plowing along and then tell you about it later. Anyway, I've got the the Harbor Freight generator running and charging the batteries in the tiny house on wheels. The golf cart batteries are deader than dead. They have they are no longer really taking charges. So I just run the Harbor Freight generator to run the battery charger to use whatever power I need in the house. Once those forklift batteries are restored, they will come over here but very soon after the holidays that is I do have a very good forklift battery going to be delivered and will be mounted and assembled up behind the tiny house on wheels permanently so I will have a lot of power after that 